read from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 1. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're starting. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. O my Lord, the all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Text 1. Shri Shuka Uvacha Variyan Eshati Prashnaha Krita Loka Hitam Ripa Atma Vid Sammataha Pumsam Shrota Vyadi Shuya Paraha Shri Sukadeva Kuswami said, my dear King, your question is glorious because it is very beneficial to all kinds of people. The answer to this question is the prime subject matter of for hearing, and it is approved by all transcendentalists. Text two Shrota Vyadini Rajendra Nrinam Santi Sahasrashaha Apashyatam Atmatatvam Grihesha Grihamidhinam. Those persons who are materially engrossed, being blind to the knowledge of ultimate truth, have many subject matters for hearing in human society, O Emperor. Text 3 Nidraya Hriyate Naktam Vyavayena Chavavayaha Divacha Tehaya Rajan Kutumbha Paramenava the lifetime of such an envious householder is passed at night either in sleeping or in sex indulgence and in the daytime either in making money or maintaining family members. Text 4 Dehapatya kalatra deshvatma sanyeshva satsvapi desham pramato nithanam Persons devoid of Atma Tattva do not inquire into the problems of life, being too attached to the fallible soldiers like the body, children and wife, although sufficiently experienced, they still do not see their inevitable destruction. Text 5 Tasmar Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavani Shvaro Harihi Shrota Vyakirtita Vyascha Smarta Vyasche Chatabhayam. O descendant of King Bharata, one who desires to be free from all miseries must hear about, glorify, and also remember the personality of Kuret, who is the super soul, the controller, and the survivor. The, and the saviour from all miseries. Text 6. Etavan Sankhya Yoga Bhyam Swadharma Parinishthaya Janmalabha Parapumsam Ante Narayana Smritihe The highest perfection of human life achieved either by complete knowledge of matter and spirit, by practice of mystic powers, or by perfect discharge of occupational duty is to remember the personality of Godhead at the end of life. Text 7 Prayena munayo rajan nivritta vidhi sedhataha naigunya staramante sma gunanu kathane harihe O King Pariksit, mainly the topmost transcendentalist who are above the regulative principles and restrictions take pleasure in describing the glories of the Lord. Text 8 Idam Bhagavatam Nama Puranam Brahma Samhitam Adhitatvan Dvaparado Pittur Dvaya Yenadaham At the end of the Dvapar Yuga, I studied this great supplement of Vedic literature named Srimad Bhagavatam, 
which is equal to all the Vedas. From my father, Srila Dvaipayana Vyasadev. Text 9. Padinishthito pinaigunya uttam shloka lilaya grihita chetara rajashe akhyanam yad adhitavan. O saintly king, I was certainly situated perfectly in transcendence, yet I was still attracted by the delineation of pastimes of the Lord, who is described by enlightened verses. Text 10. Tadaham te pidhasyami maha porushiko pavan yasya shradhatamasu syan mukunde mati sati. That very Srimad Bhagavatam I shall recite before you because you are the most sincere devotee of Lord Krishna, one who gives full attention and respect to hearing Srimad Bhagavatam achieves unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord, the giver of salvation. Text 11 Eta nirvidya mananam ichatam akuto bhayam yoginam ripa nirnitam harir namanu kirtanam O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all, including those who are free from all material desires, those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. Text 12. Kim Pramatasya Bahubhi Parokshay Haya Nairiha Varam muhurtam viditam ghatate kshayaseyataha. What is the value of a prolonged life which is wasted, inexperienced by years in this world? Better a moment of full consciousness because that gives one a start in searching after his supreme interest. Text 13. Khatvango nama rajashir. The saintly king Katvanga, after being informed that the duration of his life would be only a moment more, at once freed himself from all material activities and took shelter of the supreme safety, the personality of Godhead. Text 14. Tava Pieter he Koravya Saptaham Jivita Vedhi Upakal Payat Servam Tavat Yat Samparaikam Maharaj Parikshit, now your duration of life is limited to seven more days. So during this time, you can perform all those rituals which are needed for the best purpose of your next life. Text 15. Antakale tu purusha agate gata sadvasaha chindyata sangasha strena spreham dehe nu ye chitam. At the last stage of one's life, one should be bold enough not to be afraid of death, but one must cut off all attachment to the material body and everything pertaining to it and all desires thereof. Text 16. Grihat pravarjito dhiraha punya tirtha jalaplutaha shucho vivikta asino vidhivat kalpita sene. One should leave home and practice self control in a sacred place. He should bathe regularly and sit down in a lonely place till he sanctified. Text 17. Abhyasen manasa shuddham divrid brahmaksharam param mano yache jitashvaso brahma bijam avismaran. After sitting in the above manner, make the mind remember the three transcendental letters Om 
and by regulating the breathing process, control the mind so as not to forget the transcendental state. Text 18. Niyachet vishaye pyokshan manasa buddhi sarathi manaha karma bhir akshitam shubharthi dharayethiya. Gradually, as the mind becomes progressively spiritualized, withdraw it from sense activities, and by intelligence, the senses will be controlled. The mind, too absorbed in material activities, can be engaged in the service of the personality of Godhead and become fixed in full transcendental consciousness. Text 19. Tetraikavayat. Vam dhyayet avyo chinne na chetasa mano nirvishayan yukpa tata kinchana na smaret padam tat paramam vishnor mano yatra prasidati. Thereafter, you should meditate upon the limbs of Vishnu one after another without being deviated from the conception of the complete body. This the mind becomes free from all sense objects. There should be no other thing to be thought upon. Because the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, is the ultimate truth, the mind becomes completely reconciled in Him only. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I will be um, taking my camera off on and off today, but uh, the aim of today's session is actually to cover verses 5, 6, and 7. So I'll go back and read the verses, and then we'll have a short class on it. Next five. No descendant of Bharat, one who desires to be free from all miseries must hear about, glorify, and also remember the personality of Godhead, who is super soul, the controller and the savior of all miseries. So th this verse, and I'll, I'll read the other two, this verse is really um, stipulating very, very clearly that the conversation between uh, Sukadev Goswami and Maharaj Parikshit is that for any one of us, if we want to be free from all miseries, these miseries are adhyatmic, adibotic, adidevic. If we're not going to have trouble from other people or difficulties or challenges, we're going to have difficulties with our own mind. If our mind isn't giving us trouble, that is the, the chatter, the challenges, um, the anxieties, maybe stuff that we've got from childhood, you know, it could even be lack of confidence, uh, certain uh, fears that we carry. These all carry um, miseries. Not only that, there's also um, things that we're not in control of. Um, I was reading the news the other day, not that I read it often, but it's predicting that by 2030, which is not long, in the next six years, Britain could have a, a serious uh, issue with dengue fever and uh, all sorts of diseases related to mosquito because of climate change. So when we talk about Adiyatmi, Garibodhika, and Adidevi, we can understand that, you know, the, there are aspects of nature that will impact us. So here, Sukadeva Goswami is telling uh, Prakshit Maharaj that if we really want to be free from challenges, then we, the only sane solution and conclusion is that we must hear about, glorify, and remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the super soul, the controller, and the savior of all miseries. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, how often do we hear about the Supreme Lord? 
who is the Supreme Lord? He's a person. So in terms of, um, you know, what is this person like? How can I find out about this person? And how can I have a personal relationship with him so that I can not only just glorify, but remember the Supreme Lord? So who is a great example of that? Well, we know that Srimati Radharani is the perfect example of someone who uh, is constantly, you know, her eyes, her ears, her mouth are constantly, uh, not, not only does she just see, but hear, but she speaks only about Krishna. So that's a great example. Then we have other great devotees like um, Uddhava. You know, Uddhava is always in uh, transcendental bliss, thinking about Lord Krishna, remembering Lord Krishna, remembering and glorifying him. Then who else do we know that uh, has transcended uh, miseries and challenges? Only as a small child when he was uh, literally orphaned, Narada Muni, Narada Muni's um, whole um, philosophy or teachings for us, because we follow the path of Narada Muni, is to um, glorify the Lord, his form, his pastimes, uh, Lord's character, Lord's paraphernalia. And, uh, you know, in that way, we alleviate the suffering of others, but we also alleviate our own suffering. And by doing that, then we feel enlivened and uh, others feel enlivened. And I think one of the key things about this is that if we really want to understand who the Supreme Lord is, uh, and we understand that the basis, certainly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us, that the basis of, um, you know, the most fundamental aspect of relationship is loving exchanges, then we have to maybe ask ourselves, do I at the moment have a loving exchange with Lord Krishna? Do I have loving exchanges with other devotees? And um, can I recall the Lord? Can I hear about the Lord? Can I glorify the Lord? Can I remember the Lord and uh, feel that joy? Because the Lord who here in this verse, it says, is the super soul, the controller and the savior of all misery. So that in itself is indicating to us that, you know, sometimes we'll think, well, okay, you know, I need to have, um, I need to find a way of uh, alleviating my suffering. But here in Bhagavatam, it's very, very categorical that if we want to simply, we have to let go of other options that we're always looking for because the mind is always saying, well, I've got this problem, so I'll go here and I'll sort it out or I'll acquire something and it will sort it out or I'll have some kind of treatment. And, you know, of course, uh, one has to uh, be sensible and apply whatever uh, we need to do to alleviate miseries because the miseries, as we said, Adi Atmik, Adi Bodhik, Adi Devi, those that come of the mind, uh, you know, we can't just sit and say, okay, I'll glorify the Lord and everything will be all right. By glorifying the Lord, it gives us the understanding by which to uh, handle situations. So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada, um, really says that uh, in sort of halfway down the purport, but Shri Prabhupada says one should do anything, either good or bad in its own account, but must execute everything on behalf of the Supreme Lord. So here we get an indication that, you know, religion can be quite kamakanda. You know, if I do this, then uh, I'll get good piety. Here Shri Prabhupada is saying we shouldn't do anything good or bad uh, on the account that, you know, we're going to benefit or it, whether it's good or bad, it, it's motivated by some kind of personal benefit. Here, Srila Prabhupada tells us categorically that we execute on behalf of the Supreme Lord, who is the proprietor of everything. So in that, we also understand that the Supreme Lord um, is the only person, really, that we should be glorifying. Then further down in the purport, Srila Prabhupada talks about um, that, you know, the instruction for working on the Lord's account. So therefore, one should first of all hear about the Lord. And then when one has perfectly and scrutinizingly heard, one must glorify the Lord's acts, deeds, 
Thus, it will become possible to remember constantly. So here, Srila Prabhupada is telling us very clearly how we must do that. And so that way, we'll remember the transcendental nature of the Lord. Certainly when Uddhava, um, when Fedora approaches Uddhava and uh, asks him, you know, while Fedora is on pilgrimage, um, he asks uh, Uddhava, you know, what were the instructions of the Lord? So here, that's one way that the, the devotees can sit together and ask each other about their own understanding and realization of the Lord. So here, Prabhupada tells us that Hearing about and glorifying the Lord are identical with the transcendental nature of the Lord. And so by doing so, one will always be in the association of the Lord. This brings freedom from all sorts of fear. So fear and misery are intrinsically linked together. And something I wanted to share with you uh, is, you know, when we are, um, we have to be able to self-reflect and say, you know, what's the percentage of the day where I feel um, hopeful and joyful, um, blissful, um, accepting of others? Do I feel peace? Um, or am I, you know, what's the large percentage of my day where I feel uh, pride? And sometimes, you know, we don't even realize when we are prideful or anger. You know, when when did I get angry? How many times in a day do I get angry? Uh, what about my desires? What kind of desires do I have? And fundamentally, unless we are completely surrendered to Krishna, then we will at some point feel fear constantly. And that fear comes through anxiety. It comes through being withdrawn. It comes through uh, unstable and disturbed thinking. So not only that, uh, fear and anxiety bring about, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of misbehavior is done because of fear or desire. So, if we're feeling miseries here, the Shrima Bhagavatam, this verse is not mincing words. It's saying that if we want to overcome miseries, the miseries of this material world are that we will feel fear, grief, apathy, guilt, and shame. Sometimes we have to think about what's my internal chatter like, or when I'm having conversations with the people that I love, my nearest and dearest, um, are they joyful? Are they optimistic? Are they neutral? Um, or are they full of fear and uh, grief and apathy and guilt and shame and blame and you know all of those things that come together? So here, I mean, that's the reality of, how most people will be living unless they are really seriously um, following following this instruction, which is, um, you know, hearing and glorifying the Lord. So the Lord here, uh, in terms of the verse, Srila Prabhupada says, the Lord is the super soul, the Paramatma present in the heart of all living beings. And thus by above hearing and glorifying the process, the Lord invites the association of all in his creation. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, just by, um, you know, if we want to cultivate, so we want to overcome, um, what's the word, um, miseries, then we have to do a couple of things. The first thing is to really petition to the Lord, really pray very sincerely. Um, to ask the Lord to cast out anything that is unfavorable to us. Now, when we're feeling miserable, if we don't take responsibility for it, we will think that there are others who are creating that pain. But here, Bhagavad Gita says, we have to uh, say within ourselves, actually, ask within ourselves, what is this um, that I'm feeling that um, is causing uh, or creating unfavorable consciousness within me so the first thing is we petition to the lord that my dear lord uh you're more powerful than me um you know i'm i'm powerless in this situation and actually when we when we start with that kind of prayer right at the beginning that i'm 
powerless, your power is greater than mine, we automatically become stronger. Not because we're saying we're powerless, but actually we're in a very weak position when we're always trying to control uh, because it's, um, it's, it's a matter that, you know, we can never uh, really control anything. But here, when we petition to the Lord uh, to take out all of our unfavorable tendencies, then somehow or another, the Lord, you know, we make ourselves open. So why, why would we want to do that? Because unless we have the taste for chanting of the Holy Name, unless we have, um, you know, unless we're feeling deep bliss and happiness, then we have to go within ourselves and um, question um, how much joy and bliss we feel when we're chanting and hearing about the Lord. You know, how excited do we get about um, hearing about the Lord, having conversations with other devotees? And then Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, pray before the Lord daily. So we're asking and petitioning the Lord uh, to cast out things that are unfavorable to help us. And then we pray to the Lord on a daily basis. Um, and that way, we slowly not only develop our faith, but we come, become more and more dependent because Krishna's power is greater than ours. And if we, if we call to him, that, you know, um, I really want to understand you, my Lord. I want to understand uh, who are you? What kind of a person are you? So we get an indication from the devotees uh, of the Lord. When they're glorifying the Lord, they, they feel transcendental bliss. So we've got the textbooks. We're reading them. So we have to question, when do I feel that bliss? Do I ever feel that bliss when I'm reading? Do I get really excited about the Bhagavatam? Do I, um, you know, do I dedicate myself on a daily basis to actually understand who the Supreme Lord is? Well, we find that um, with Vidura, uh, when he's having this conversation with um, Vidura and Vidura asks him to reveal one of the Lord's instructions, that's a key indication for us that if we really want to get to understand the Lord, one of the great texts is to actually read Krishna book. And by reading Krishna book, um, we begin to understand Lord Krishna's personality, how he is as a person, uh, what he thinks, what he likes, what he does. And we understand that, you know, and sometimes it feels like a contradiction that the, the Lord is comes as death for the demons, but for his devotees, he comes um, as someone who brings incredible happiness and joy. And, you know, we can see that in the presence of coming back to this verse again, that if we want to eradicate all miseries, then by uh, remembering and hearing and glorifying the Lord, we we will begin to feel the joy that, you know, the, we begin to get a little insight into what is it about the Lord's devotees? What is it about Uddhava? What is it about the gopis? What is it about, um, you know, the, the great, great devotees who had the Lord's instructions um, and association and understood the Lord that somehow or another um, he becomes the most wonderful thing in their lives and yet for the demons the lord or god becomes um a kind of a god that's um vengeful indifferent uh punitive condemning despising but when the lord the the, the verse the the lord comes to honor his devotees and honor and protect his devotees and annihilate the demons. So if we are at a low level state of consciousness, we will feel that when things happen to us, the miseries that come to us, we will feel that God, where is God? You know, you often hear people say, where is God? You know, um, I've been doing a lot of seva or I've been, you know, worshiping God, but look, this happened to me, that happened to me. Um, and we, you know, 
at that low level of consciousness, the miseries come in because all of a sudden um, there's feelings of disappointment, um, feeling fear, uh, tragedy, hopelessness, you know, the world is evil, people are evil, uh, life is miserable. And when we when we have that level of consciousness where it says quite categorically miseries, then we would also feel that uh, if we're at a low stage of consciousness, the demonic consciousness will think God is a punishing God. However, when the devotees uh, are glorifying the Lord and they're feeling joy and they're feeling love and they're feeling happiness, then they will be going through their own uh, transformation. Um, through those exchanges, there will be personal revelation within one's heart. and we begin to see that actually Lord Krishna is so kind, he's so loving, he's wise, he's merciful, he's inspiring, he's joyful. Uddhava tells uh, and explains that where, if, if we are connected to Lord Krishna within the heart, within the super soul, if we're connected to the Lord uh, in, his, um, in his feature of Brahman, but also connected to the Lord as a person, here we, we get the indication. You really want to know the Lord as a person, then you hear, you chant, you glorify him, and then you begin to understand. And Uddhava explains that Lord Krishna, he's like the sun. So whenever there is sun, there's no darkness, there's warmth, there's growth, um, there's joy, uh, there's protection. But when the Lord leaves, and this is this is a problem, the Lord hasn't really left us, but um, within, you know, the um, Shikshastram, the, the Jeto Darpana Marjanam, we can't see the Lord, and we are not able to access who the Lord is, or actually understand the Lord because of the dirt, dust and the dirt created within our heart. So again, we come back to petitioning to Bhaktivinoda Thakur as he says that we have to petition to the Lord to cast out these unfavorable um, tendencies. Otherwise, we will experience life like when the sun sets, when there's darkness. Um, and uh, again, I'm going to refer to Uddhava. He, he says that when there's darkness, the dark energies, the forces uh, become much, much stronger, and therefore we, we get pulled into uh, material nature and, you know, our consciousness will be pulled down. So let's go on to the next verse, which is uh, text six. And this is translation, the highest perfection of human life achieved either by complete knowledge of matter and spirit by practice of mystic powers or by perfect discharge of occupational duty is to remember the personality of Godhead at the end of life. So, this is very interesting because this verse is actually saying that if we are to get the highest perfection of human life, if it's achieved either by complete knowledge of matter and spirit, by practice of mystic powers, or by perfect discharge of occupational duty, it is to remember the personality of Godhead at the end of life. So this is very interesting because when it talks about mystic powers, uh, Lord Krishna, um, you know, he was from the Yadu dynasty, and all the Yadus uh, were... Uh, very psychically powerful. They had mystic powers. However, um, they didn't really uh, recognize or remember. Well, if you don't recognize that uh, Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord, how are you going to remember? Because they're so absorbed in themselves. Again, with occupational duty, this this is about you know. Uh, uh, what sometimes we say it's a cheating religion that you know if if we just think about occupational duty if I do good uh, if I do bad I'll get the results but here um, Bhagavatam says whether you're do you know whether you're getting you know whether you're practicing mystic powers the problem with that is that you you know those who are mystics they, they they'll start 
sort of, it's quite, what's the word? I'm trying to find the word. It's it, it, the, the, there's some kind of uh, pleasure in knowing that you can see the past, present, and future, or certainly you can see aspects of the future. And then what happens is you start depending a lot, or the arrogance of the ego comes in that I know a lot. And here, again, by perfect strategy of um, occupational duty, what we don't want to do is that be a grihamedi, where we are so absorbed in occupational duty, but we're forgetting to remember Lord Krishna at the end of life. So how will we remember Lord Krishna at the end of the life if we don't practice the perfection of pure devotional service, i.e. hearing about the Lord, um, glorifying the Lord, understanding who the Lord is, having great association with other devotees, so that we can somehow or another remember the Lord at the end of life. Now, if any of you have been in a situation where, um, you, you know, de death has been on the doorstep, or certainly a few years ago, I, I had had to go into, um, I don't know what they call the resuscitation ward. Um, at one point, I just thought, that's it, I'm going to go now. And the question is, um, can I remember Krishna? Can I remember Krishna? Not out of anxiety, please, Krishna, help me. I want to come back to you. But can I remember Krishna with such faith that somehow or another that my Lord is so loving, he's so kind. It doesn't even matter if you give up the body. The only thing is just please help me to remember you at the time of death. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a challenge. If we are not conversing and thinking constantly about Lord Krishna. You know, um, what is it about the gopis that they feel so much love for the Krishna, for Lord Krishna? Yes, it's confidential pastimes, but at some point we have to be able to um, clear um, the, you know, the, the unfavorable tendencies within our heart so that we can begin to experience joy and healing within our own heart. Uh, but when we are around other people, they feel so joyful. They feel so happy in our association. Okay. So I think um, it, Prashama Prabhupada ends at, towards the end of this um, purport by saying that um, everyone is anxious to achieve the highest perfection of his particular activity. And it is indicated herein that such perfection is Nairan Smriti, for which everyone must endeavor his best. In other words, life should be molded in such a manner that one is able to progressively remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead at every step. Well, I'm sure that's the case for you all because you're here and you've rocked up for the Bhagavatam uh, in terms of remembering the Lord. And we have to have some kind of taste for that to be able to want to hear and listen. So the final um, verse that I've been asked to speak on is text seven. And here, Sikhadev Goswami says, O oh, King Parikshit, mainly the topmost transcendentalists who are above the regulative principles and restrictions take pleasure in describing the glories of the Lord. So this is very interesting, isn't it? That um, mainly the topmost transcendentalists who are above regulative principles and restrictions take pleasure in describing the glories of the Lord. So let's see what Shana Prabhupada says about that, because in some ways this sounds contra contradictory, that you know, we have to follow the four regulative principles, but what is it about um, these topmost transcendentalists who are beyond that? So let's see what Shana Prabhupada says. Shana Prabhupada says, the topmost transcendentalist is liberated soul, and therefore not within the purview of regulative um, principles. So here, so who are the regulative principles for them? So a neophyte who is intended to be promoted to the spiritual plane is guided by the spiritual master under regulative principles. So we shouldn't uh, at all try to 
I think that, you know, I'm not a neophyte and therefore, you know, I'm kind of leaning towards, you know, becoming a liberated soul. Well, I think, you know, certainly if I thought that, I know I would be delusional, but um, it, it's, it's you know, it's really, you know, beginning to understand what is our spiritual master's, uh, what is the last of us? So if you're initiated or you're aspiring, it is certainly to follow the four regulative principles. And why? Because it comes back to what Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, uh, petitioning to the Lord to cast out all our unfavorable tendencies. So here, Shri Prabhupada says that, you know, uh, he or we uh, may be compared to a patient who is treated by various restrictions under medical jurisdiction. Generally, liberated souls also take pleasure in describing the transcendental activities. So if you're, if you're liberated, then you will feel great pleasure in describing the Lord's transcendental activities. And so what are the Lord's transcendental activities? They are revealed to us um, sh surely through Srila Prabhupada, when we read Krishna book and we read the pastimes of the Lord, but they also revealed within the heart through the super soul, the Paramatma. So uh, the topmost transcendentalist, Shri Prabhupada says, or the liberated souls realizing by advanced experience of transcendental knowledge. And therefore they take pleasure in the discussion of the transcendental qualities of the Lord's path time. So in the Bhagavad Gita 4.9, I think that is um, Janma Karma Chame Divyam. Evam yogeti tattva, tyaktva deham punar janma, neti maam etiso arjuna. So one who knows, Bhagavad Gita tells us categorically uh, uh, in verse 4.9, that one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities doesn't, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode. So here for us, ladies and gentlemen, if there's one thing we're going to take away today from this session is to really ask ourselves, mm, do I know the transcendental nature of the Lord and his appearance and his activities? If I don't, what's the one thing that I can do? Yes, I can start reading. Maybe, you know, a lot of devotees will read Krishna book at night time um, or, you know, dedicate time during the day. To read, you can we can understand the Lord's activities through Krishna books, through Srimad Bhagavatam, through Bhagavad Gita, and of course through Chaitanya Chaitanya. So, just going back, um, so the personality of Godhead declares that his appearance and activities are all vivyam or transcendental. So a common man who's under the spell of material energy. So here's a self-check. You know, under the material spell of, of, or the spell of material energy takes for granted that the Lord is like one of us. So here, Srila Prabhupada says this time and time again, uh, that the Lord, you know, the foolish think of Lord. So this is Bhagavad Gita. Um, chapter 9, verse 11, that should, uh, it says the foolish think of Krishna as one of them. So Lord Krishna says, fools deride me when I descend in the human form because they do not know my transcendental nature. So this is where Uddhava is having these conversations with Vidura and so, you know, he, he finds the Lord's activities so extraordinary. You know, in at one point the Lord is a baby and he's killing the demons. At another point, the Lord is um you, you know having loving exchanges with his devotees. Uh at another point, the Lord is humble and asks for forgiveness from his parents, who he um is extremely tolerant, um, silent, uh, you know. I suppose it, it, it can sort of go on, but one of the other ways we can actually find out about the Lord is through um, prayers of saints and acharyas. That, you know, what have they said about Lord Krishna that is so wonderful? How can I 
understand, um, you know, how can I take delight? And I think for me, one of the things that's most intriguing is the mother rasticum, you know, that um, the Lord is sweetness personified. Um, and in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya in chapter 10, uh, it is said that Krishna is the, the sweetest honey that we can ever imagine. Um, the perfect devotee of Krishna attains the stage of, um, oh, you know, the, the devotee is so overwhelmed in seeing the beauty of Krishna. So this is described also in Krishna Karnamrita, which describes the Lord is sweet, he's sweeter, but he's the sweetest. So the Lord, um, the devotee in the absence of the Lord, um, you know, uh, finds it extremely difficult, but and see the deity of the Lord and drink the nectar of the Lord's beauty through, through the eyes. So coming back to the Mother Rastikam, it's such a beautiful uh, prayer um, that describes, you know, the Lord. For how can a demon describe the Lord as sweet? Because for the demon, he experiences God as an angry God, as a God who punishes. But for the devotee, the devotee experiences the Lord um, even through the devotee's tragedies, even through the devotee's challenges, even through, because even if we're a devotee, it doesn't mean that this material world isn't going to throw uh, challenges to us. Yes, we're going to feel uh, miseries, but here Bhagavatam teaches us that just like, um, uh, was it um, Shivas? Shivas? He in in the in the past times of Chaitanya Chamrita, uh, that they were all uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all the devotees congregated, and they were having Harinam at Shivasi's house, and in the other room, his son had died, and the the lesson we get from that is that you know without sounding uh, because the Lord is so sensitive, he's so kind. You know, it was it was Srivasa was saying, no, 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 you know, the perfection, because he understood that the illusion that this is this person is not here anymore, they they're mine, or I'm so responsible for them, that when they're not here anymore, we can feel so much grief and pain and separation and loss. But here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Why didn't you tell me? But then through the Lord's mercy, he revives this child. And the child begins to ask, just like King Chitraketu, you know, which, which father are you? Which mother are you? From which lifetime? So we, we begin to understand that, yes, you know, outwardly it sounds like Shivas is quite harsh. That he, you know, there's give them going on and he just says, no, don't disturb Chitanya Mahaprabhu. But on the other hand, we can uh, learn the, the 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 greater lesson that, ladies and gentlemen, we will get digressed in this lifetime, whether it's our uh, responsibilities of our family, our occupational duties, whatever it is. But what we have to keep at the center is that, you know, who is this Lord Krishna who's so sweet? He's so, you know, I want to get to know the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his lips are sweet, his face is sweet, his eyes are sweet. You know, the Lord whose words are sweet, his character is sweet, his dress is sweet. Um, the Lord's flute, the, the, the hearing, the, you know, the hearing of the flute is so sweet. Even the Lord's um, liberation, his activities, um, everything about the Lord is so sweet. So we can only really put a plea out there, as Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, that, you know, please help me to remember the Lord and, and to begin practicing in a way that at the time of death, I can remember the Lord, not just at the time of death, but then I, I am, right now as I'm living, I begin to have a relationship with the, with the personal God who uh, is my greatest friend and who is waiting anxiously for me to return. 
So finally, Srila Prabhupada says, real transcendental pleasure, right at the bottom of the purport, the last almost the last couple of sentences. Real transcendental pleasure is realized in the glorification of the transcendental Lord and not in the feeling of being situated in his impersonal feature. So this is just telling us that you know the 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 jnanis or those who are in the impersonal uh, who are attached to the impersonal feature of the Lord, the Brahma Jyoti, they will feel bliss, they will feel happiness, but um, it's not the topmost, it's a low status of understanding. So it is said that when we begin to have God realization, the first we start with Brahman, with the Lord's impersonal features, then it comes to Paramatma, the super soul, beginning to understand who the Supreme Lord is. You know, do we feel connected to the Lord? Can we hear the Lord? Can we feel his loving presence? Can we feel it through others? And then finally, in describing this person, God is a person who has transcendental activities. So I'm going to stop here, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, 8.37 now. Does anyone have any realizations, anything that they would like to share? Uh, any, any tips for everybody else on how um, you develop uh, this, these different opportunities to uh, hear and chant and glorify the Lord? Gosh, you're all the silent. Hare Krishna Nandarani, please accept <laughs> all of this. It's sorry for it, Krishna Prabhupada. So nicely you narrated the whole, these three uh, verses very nicely. Very, uh, I felt that you had, um, you have so much relationship with Krishna, then that's how we can speak the way it needed to be spoken. And uh, you have personal realization. So I, I feel very connected to that. And also I feel very connected when I discuss, you know, the, any all this little literature, the spiritual literature, Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita, with somebody else, you know, then we really I I feel, you know, because our understanding gets deeper and deeper. And then I I I was discussing with somebody about uh, on Bhagavad Gita today, mm -hmm. and I was we were just discussing the, all the different aspects of Krishna and how, you know, Brahman, Paramatma, and you know, personal, and the way Shri Prabhupada um describe you know so much time he's taken this you know three aspect of um uh, the sunshine the you know the sun globe and uh, and the you know the personal aspect of um, the sun god and how much time he took uh he took to for us to understand the all the features of of, of sri krishna you know that's when we discuss like that with our devotee and try to analyze each word and that's really i feel i feel very connected very connected to to the lord the whole thing and how wonderful he is you know how we can serve more and more and you know just by hearing and chanting it's just um it's it's just discussion with the other devotees i i, I feel that way i feel more connected if I if I do it in isolation, I, I I don't feel I don't feel I would feel so much you know joy within within myself, and uh, yeah that's my realization after I hear you because you have understood the, this verse so nicely and that's how you explain uh, and I feel very very connected to the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Malika Mataji. It's uh, through your loving association and your encouragement that somehow or another, you know, I had the opportunity to study Bhagavatam because, you know, I said to you, oh, I really want to study the Bhagavatam. I really want to read. And you said to me, oh, the Bhakti Vaibhava course is on. <laughs> and again, it's the association and the mercy of a devotee that they put you on the right path. And Uruva actually says that, you know, for us, uh, you know, how do we plant that seed of devotional service in the heart. 
well, first we have to obviously clear the, you know, clear the, prepare the soil so that it's nice and fertile. And then we cultivate it by putting the seed within the heart and pouring the water. That is the chanting and the healing. Yeah. Yes. Then, our, you know, our little creeper grows. And as it's growing, it needs to take shelter of another stronger devotee. Mm. Because when it can hold on to the other devotee, it can grow. And it's almost like the two grow together and they're nourished uh, through the conversations they have with, with each other. Not that, oh, you know, he knows more than me or she knows more than me and, you know, I'm going to correct you. But it's more about, because, you know, I, I have this nature of being critical. So I'm, I'm talking about my own... Um, Faults, I suppose, that, you know, it's taken such a long time to understand that, you know, because you're so wrapped up in your position and your power and maybe money or whatever, because, you know, we've not quite, you know, we quite haven't worked out our inner demons within our own heart, that the most beautiful, joyful association we can get before we understand the Lord is to actually have that association with his devotee. Mm. Really want to get that insight, then then it is through the devotee who is loving and encouraging. And you know, so I thank you, Mother Palika. It's your greatness that you say great things. But really, I have to give the credit to you, and I have to give the credit to all the devotees and Shila Prabhupada. So thank you. Thank you, Nandan. You're very kind. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else would like to share? Please share your realizations because there's so many of you in this group today who can say so much. You know, there's Salish Bhai, there's Krishnavani. I'm just, I'm just picking out people that I think I know or I recognize. Kushangi Mataji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna, everyone. Um, yes, Mataji. Thank you very much for this nice class. Uh, but you know the nine nine nobody can understand Krishna. Not even the greatest devotee can understand Krishna. The more we learn about Krishna, the more we want to know about Krishna. It's so difficult. So but the, the nine processes start by Shravanam. That's what uh, my experience, right? That's why how I I um I came to understand a little bit about Krishna by listening. I used to listen for hours, uh, Krishna Katha. And that is where you start being more inquisitive. You want to know more. Why is this like this? Why is this like this? And this uh, questioning is not from this world. You know, when Krishna was baby in the lap of uh, Mother Yashoda, Mother Yashoda would uh, tell the story, and Krishna would question all the time. And so what happened? Ram Katha, what happened? And this Leela, that Leela, what happened? What happened? So we have got the nature of uh, 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 asking for questions. Yes, Mataji, uh, we need the association of devotees and we need to be inquisitive, but not in a challenging ma manner. We should ask very humbly and we should inquire when we don't understand something. So uh, for me, it was Shravanam and then Kirtanam came after, after years. Thank, thank you. you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you for your nice class. Thank you. You thank came you. up there so long time. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, um, before we close today, we've got, uh, uh, we've got a very, very, very special devotee's birthday today. Um, it's Selish Prabhu's birthday, Selish Bhai, who's on the chat. And I'm sure it's just Selish Bhai Govindia. Um, and, you know, what can I say, you know, when, when we celebrate the birth of a devotee, we're celebrating uh, our good fortune uh, to have great souls in this world, to have their association, to learn from them, to experience their love and their kindness. And I would say Salish Bhai is all that and more. Um, lot, many people will know that the, you know, the Krishnavanti schools uh, would have never, I know Salish Bhai would probably be cringing right now, uh, but I must say this, I must glorify him for his uh, amazing, amazing contribution. It was his courage and it was his drive that really got the project going 
Um, it's a great, great song. And, you know, on behalf of everybody today, Selish Bhai, I want to wish you a, a very, very happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Yes. Um, clearly, uh, we got to hear from Selish Bhai today. So, Selish Bhai, tell us, tell us what you're thinking right now. I'm thinking you've got the wrong person, Mataji. And again, you, all of those uh, accolades are absolutely undeserving, I'm afraid. I'm very fallen and not deserving of any of those. So I had no real part in Krishnavanti. It was your, uh, your hard work that really got Krishnavanti going. So thank you for all your courage and guidance in the early days of setting it up. It was uh, your leadership that really got it off the ground. So thank you. Um, I have no words, so, but you, you, you falsely glorified me, so. Well, you know, Selesh Bhai, this is, you know, I, I was watching an example on YouTube where they say when devotees go on pilgrimage, you know, you, you seek out other devotees and you ask and you inquire from them. And I saw this beautiful exchange where they just kept giving each other credit. So I will just say to you, that you might have done what well, you might have said what you have said, but the truth is, um, it's the person who plants the seed. You know, nothing ain't gonna happen without the seed. So, thank you, Selish Bhai. But on behalf of everybody on this group today, you know, we really wish you a very very happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for your devotion, your Krishna consciousness, your courage, your strength, and. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything because you've got, got a lovely opportunity to say something. So, Saroj or uh, anyone out there who knows uh, Selish Bhai, please uh, don't lose this opportunity to not say anything. You know, Hare you Krishna. Know. Yes, Hare. You? Okay, go ahead. Hare Krishna. Okay. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Selish Bhai. Many, many happy returns of the day. Happy birthday to you. It's, you know, like you are inspiring us to, through your devotion to your deities. So always praise that how wonderfully you look after your deities and you bring up your children beautifully Krishna conscious. So you all are what you call the example <clears throat> to follow. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Krishna uh, Krishna Mataji. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was uh, going, going to say, you know, you were talking about that when you are going to die, you have to remember Krishna. But this is one thing, you know, uh, I don't know. It, 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 uh, it depends how you pass away. You know, if you are prepared like you are ill, that there will be devotees who encourage you and remind you of Krishna. But if suddenly drop dead what happens i was just thinking you know while we are having this class you know yeah well what happens is krishna is uh, you see the relationship between uh, a devotee and krishna is very private it's very confidential Krishna mataji so certainly my understanding is that you know, we have a very limited understanding. All the devotees were around this person. They were chanting. They were singing. You know, um, but actually, uh, what we don't know is that the Lord is the master of mystics. You know, he's he's with the the son, uh, as the Paramatma. Uh, we can only see it at the three D level, the gross material level, but we have no idea how the Lord, um, you know. We cannot underestimate uh, that so we think somebody passed away on their own. How do we know that? We don't know that because Krishna is always with them. And Krishna never, ever, um, Krishna never abandons his devotees. It's a, it's a right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, yeah, sorry. Prabhupada sorry. very nicely puts it that um, if we practiced all our lives, and remember Krishna, even if time of the death we can't remember him, he won't forget us. We might forget him, but he won't forget us. So it, if for a devotee, we leave everything to him. So long as we've practiced 
with a pure heart and a pure consciousness, he will, we just leave it to him. We don't, we don't even strive necessarily to, we should, of course, but we shouldn't even worry about not remembering at the time because if our consciousness is pure and clear, Krishna won't forget us. Yeah. No matter how we yes. pass, no matter what circumstances we pass under. If we've practiced all our lives at the time of death, he will remember us. Yeah, thank you, Sarish Bhai. And I think, Kishanli Mataji, that's a very that's a very pertinent question you've asked. And it's certainly one that troubled me for a long time as well. Um, yeah, it applies to everyone of us, you know. To every one of us, all of us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think Sarish Bhai has given such a, a beautiful... Yeah, he's given a good answer, yeah. Yeah, that Krishna never forsakes us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Loving, you know. And it's having that faith, isn't it, that Krishna, you know... You know, is the glass half full or half uh, half full or half empty? You know, if it's half full, then we'll always have complete faith. And this is what Prabhupada says, you know, have faith. You must have faith. And if you yes, that Krishna will do that, then he will, because we open ourselves up for that mercy. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Uh, please Sorry, do Krishna Mantaji, just I wanted to add something. Please do, Krishna Rani. In Mataji, today's class, you know, like, as we say, you know, thanks, we all, every day we thank Srila Prabhupada because of his teachings. All the devotees come to know that even if it comes miseries, you know, Srila Prabhupada has taught us how to think. That we never blame Krishna. Whatever, you know, we go through, I know it's our purification. But also it gives us a strength that, you know, whatever Krishna does, it's so good. And also, yeah, it was our own past, past life's karmas we have to go through. But by Srila Prabhupada's teachings and mercy, we get a strength to go over it. And also, as you know, that we have, you know, big family of, you know, family of uh, devotees. So, you know, it makes it so easy. Yeah, thank you for reminding us uh, how grateful we must be. Thank you, Krishna Rani Mataji. Hare. Yeah, Prabhupada has given us everything. We've just got to try it. So on that note, uh, taking the dust of your lotus feet, begging for forgiveness, thank you so much for your wonderful association and your kindness and patience. And hope to see you all soon. Hare Krishna. Thank you for a lovely class. Thank you for a lovely class. Thank you for the beautiful class. Thank you for the beautiful class. Very, very nice. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.